Peter, you're very well known for your work around organizational learning and systems thinking. Um, um, probably less well known as a contemplative, and that's the theme that I'd like to focus on today. Um, and just ask two or three questions and then let you, let you do with them what you will. Uh, so the first one is to get a little background in terms of your life and contemplative practice, um, you know, if, the, if there were antecedents in your childhood or if it's something you came to at a certain point and, and what, it, what it means for you, what it does for you. First kind of milestone in my recollection, and the way you asked the question, I thought there are so many things I probably just don't really recollect clearly from mm -hmm. even earlier. Mm -hmm because these things are always kind of building on various formative experiences. But when I was in college, uh, I was first time I was introduced to Zen, uh, we went to Tassajara for a, a three or four day retreat. A good friend of mine invited me to go. She was a meditator, older, probably mid-30s. And I was really, it was a wonderful experience. And I remember as a consequence, I had a kind of really lasting kind of feeling that uh, there was something there. That was kind of the, the, the vague kind of sense of it afterwards. There really was something there. There was some phenomenon or some particular kind of experience of meditation that I had at least enough of a exposure, maybe even a, a, a recollection, you know, kind of like, I know this. Then in 1996, uh, probably around 95, I started just having this feeling at the stage in life I was that I needed to get a little more serious about my, my work, my personal work. And I started asking people, well, I'm kind of looking around for a teacher. So mm -hmm. I, I met a lot of therapists for one-day meetings, I mean, or one-time meetings. Good people. I mean, it was really funny. It was like, you know, Goldilocks, this bed's a little too small, mm -hmm. this bed's a little mm -hmm. too big. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's an important process we have to go through when mm -hmm. we have this kind of urge, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I needed to find a teacher. I knew that. And then, as, as luck would have it, a friend of, a, uh, of mine in, in Taiwan had been telling me about his beginning to study Buddhism. And he's a Chinese person, because he, because he knew I had this lifelong interest in mm -hmm. Eastern religion, Buddhism, Zen. Um, and so then he s found a teacher in Taiwan, and I was getting ready to make a trip to Taiwan. He said, I've arranged with my teacher, if you're up for it, to meet his teacher, his teacher being in China. So that began a, a more recent episode, the last decade or so, of mm -hmm. having a teacher in China. And, allowing me to, one, really go much deeper in my study. And in, in, in China, you really don't study Buddhism without studying Taoism. Mm -hmm. And really, both are influenced by Confucianism. Yes. And, and, mm -hmm. and although not many people understand today, Confucianism itself is a cultivation tradition mm -hmm. in its roots. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Taoism and Buddhism clearly are. Um, so that's allowed me both to continue to deepen my kind of intellectual uh, understanding but obviously, a teacher is a teacher because they help you focus on next stages in your own practice. Mm -hmm. uh, today, you know, I, I guess the simplest way to say it is that it, it is the center of my life. I mean, I, I, I think I can say that in an unconflicted way. It's not that, you know, me being better Peter is more important than my kids or my relationship with my wife. It's not anything like that. It's more like a center out of which things radiate. You know, so all these things are really important in my life. Mm -hmm. but. But it's very clear to me, and I, people, when I, when they ask me, or they, someone says, well, I hear you meditate for like an hour and a half or two hours every day, how do you do that? And I always kind of say is, well, like, would you get out of bed and not brush your teeth? I mean, it's gotten to that point. I mean, I can't imagine getting up in the morning and not sitting for an hour. So, yeah, it's become really quite integral. And I think it's kind of almost impossible for me to identify anything I do or the way I operate in different settings that's not influenced. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And um, I don't want to invade your privacy, so don't answer if you don't want to, but can you share anything about the actual practice that you're doing sure. during that hour? Um, so I started off initially with kind of classic Zen breathing exercises. I think one of the reasons uh, person like me gets attracted to Zen, you know, very intellectual, always living in all the mm -hmm. academic intellectual turbulence or whatever. Um, just the, the, just the simple quieting of mind, you know, and simple aim of just learning how more and more to slow the flow of thought and observe it. 
had a natural attraction for me. And so the progression has really been pretty simple. Uh, when I first, the teacher in China, his name is Nan, N-A-N, Master Nan. When I first met Master Nan, you know, of course, asked, he asked what sort of practice. I said, I do basically breathing practices. He said, oh, that's good. That's a good practice for someone like you. And over time, he's introduced me to a series of different things, usually like every five years or so. This isn't frequent, probably because I'm really slow. You know, I go, yeah, would you work on this for a decade and then come back and check in with me? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a classic, uh, I don't know if it's particularly Chinese, but certainly Buddhist practice, skeleton meditation. Mm -hmm. I think you're probably familiar with it because I saw a skeleton in the a skeleton in the corner here at the Garrison Institute just yes. the other day. <laughs> That's coincidental, but yes. <laughs> so that, that was a very good practice for mm -hmm. me, just particularly, there's various forms of the skeleton meditation, all of which you know, have this common uh, element of, you know, you just imagine your body as simply a skeleton. But probably for my benefit, Master Nan said also at some point, you know, at some point you just remove your head and put it reverse in the, in the navel cavity. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's a nice way to help encouraging the stopping of thought, because you no longer in your image have any head, even a, even a skull. Uh, but it sits in the navel cavity facing upside down and backwards, which is very interesting to think about, it, because it puts the crown chakra and the root chakra virtually in the same position. Right. 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 So that's been a core meditation now for a long time. So today, a typical practice for me, I would start off just you know letting whatever's going on go on for a little while. Uh, there's also an organ cleansing thing, very common for the Chinese, clearing all the yin organs. They all have different colors and sounds. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little thing that I do early in a, whenever I sit. But then I usually um, go to that skeleton meditation for, I don't know, half hour or so. You know, I'm not paying attention at the time. And the other primary thing I'll do, and usually it's pretty clear to me when I'm in a quiet enough stage to do this, is just simply really observe. You know, just more pure observation. You know, the thoughts, the feelings, you know, whatever mix of, of cognitions and uh, body sensations or emotions or whatever. But, you know, f for me at least, I've got to get to a point where things have slowed down enough so you can, I can begin to observe them arising and being there and then going away. Because before that, everything is so fast. It's like, oh, I was thinking that as opposed to, oh, there's a thought emerging. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, of course, a very powerful method of further slowing down. Mm -hmm. uh, about uh, three or four years after meeting Master Nan, I, was, I would talk to him a lot about, because he's, he, you know, like any teacher, or most teachers, I think, he, he just asks for a report, as much data as possible, just what happens. And so I was talking to him one day about the breathing. The Chinese have a whole variety of different gradations of breath. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, you know, it seems to me like I virtually stop breathing in some of these meditations. He said, well, maybe. And he asked me to describe more. And there's something they call the sea breath. Um, and the way they often explain it is that, of course, we lived many months, approximately nine before we came out of the womb, with no respiratory breathing. And that when the mind is really quiet, your body can take in all the oxygen it needs through the pores of the skin. You really don't need respiration. Mm -hmm. So that um, that's kind of usually an indication when I'm getting in a fairly quiet place. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think I've gotten to the place of where you really stop the pulse as well. But that's mm -hmm. all part of the cessation, you know, mm -hmm. the kind of core of the cessation and observation, which are the two fundamentals of and as I think of it as of virtually all Buddhist and probably a lot of other contemplative cultivation traditions, that continual slowing, 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 so you can observe more and more. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're obviously a very busy person. You travel a great deal. What impact has the meditation had when you're not actually doing meditation? Well, first off, um, having a, a good, solid practice. I mean, this could be probably all, all, any of a variety of solid practices. It's the sort of thing, like I say, like it's like brushing your teeth. You could not do it. It's so integrated. Uh, it makes a big difference when I'm traveling. You know, wherever I go, wherever I am, I have only one request when people are sticking me in some hotel or another, just as long as the window opens. I just, I really do like fresh air. There really are birds even in big cities. So just any 